Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to How To Texit. So today we're gonna to be talking about my favorite way of generating power, through geothermal generators, or when you're later in the game, thermal generators. So as I explained in one of my previous videos, geothermal generators is a pretty basic way to make power and it makes power really well. Now, the only thing bad about it that I didn't really mention in that one is that you kinda of have to keep supplying it with lava because it doesn't go through the lava too, too quick when it makes a bunch of power, but it will go through it fast enough to where you have to, you know, keep an eye on it. Now, a few ways to get around having to keep an eye on it is by implementing the build craft system with the industrial craft. So, there's a few different ways that you can continuously supply your uh, geothermal or thermal generator with lava. One of the ways, which is kind of a tedious way, you get a whole bunch of lava and you fill up these tanks i do believe each line is a bucket of lava so you can easily have you know 20 buckets of lava right here in order to make your tanks what you're going to do is you're going to take eight glass put them in a circle like a chest and you're going to get one tank out of it so it does take quite a bit of glass but glass is pretty easy as long as you find desert or something then once you have your lava in your tank you're going to want to build yourself a waterproof wooden fluid pipe. Now there's a whole bunch of different kinds of wooden or of uh, fluid pipes, but the wooden fluid pipe is what you're going to need to extract from a tank to something else. So in order to make a wooden fluid pipe, you're going to need to make a normal fluid pipe first. With that, you just need a piece of glass, two planks, any kind of planks will work, and you'll get eight wooden transport pipes. Now, in order to make it a fluid pipe, you need pipe sealant. For this, you're gonna get slime, you can make it into a pipe sealant, you can get green uh, cactus, pipe sealant. You can also compress down sticky resin. So if you find some cactuses and whatnot, then you can get your pipe sealant and you can make a waterproof pipe. Now, be very careful when you are placing down these wooden, uh, wooden fluid pipes because a lot of the time if you look at the pipe as a solid end and a clear end the solid end wants to be pointed at the object that you do not want the liquid to go back into so since you put it down like this an easy way to fix that is just look the other direction oh maybe not oh okay so an easy way to fix this is you make yourself a wrench which is just stone gear three iron in order to make stone gear you put in yeah, wooden gear with four cobblestone around it or any kind of stone. You can also do uh, four sticks in the corners and then a diamond made of cobblestone. And you'll get a stone gear. So, once you have your wrench, and you want to make sure that it is the build craft wrench and not the industrial craft wrench. Once you have your wrench, you're just going to right click it and you want that solid piece uh, point towards your tanks. Now, the other thing you want to make for this, to get the lava out of the tank through the pipe into the geothermal generator, you want to make redstone engines. They're the cheapest, they run themselves, you don't need to put anything into them to make them power. You can also make uh, sterling engines and things like that, and combust combustion engines. But they require more resources and it's not really worth it if you're just moving liquids from one place to another. So, in order to make a redstone engine, you just take two wooden gears, which once again is the four sticks and a diamond. Uh, and a diamond pattern, pattern, not a diamond. <laughs> you get a piston, piece of glass, and three planks. Any kind of planks, any kind of glass, any kind of wooden gears. Then you get yourself some redstone engines. You don't have to use three. I just like using three because it's faster. Make some levers, power them on, and they'll start out pumping really slow, but you can see it going through the tube right there. And it's coming in here, our generator is turned on, and we're making power. So, uh, the next way, if you want to get a little bit more fancy with it, is you can build yourself a pump. That way you don't have to keep bucketing. Let's say you have a volcano near you, have a whole, a large uh, lava source near you. Then you can pump it out of the lava source into the tank or straight into the geothermal generator. You don't actually need the tanks if you want to use a pump. You can just do it straight to the geothermal generator or thermal generator. Uh -uh. But if you're going to use a pump and you're going to use tanks, in order to make a pump, 
you want to get a bucket, two of those tanks, which is just eight glass, and iron gear, which is just four pieces of iron or iron ingots into that uh, diamond shape to make yourself an iron gear. And that piece of redstone, put it all together, you get pump. Now to get things out of the pump, you do not need a uh, wooden fluid pipe, but I use gold fluid pipes. You can also use stone, iron, uh, diamond, anything of the such, but golden pipes are the fastest, so that's what I use. In order to make a golden fluid pipe, it's the same thing, get your pipe sealant, get your golden pipe, two pieces of gold, one piece of glass, makes eight pipes. So it's not too uh, costy. And in order to power your pump, once again, I use redstone engines. Like I said, you can use sterling engines or combustible engines, but it's not worth it in this application. So, flip them on. And under here, you can see, I don't know if you can kind of see that, but that is the pipe coming out of the pump. And it will eventually start pumping fluid from the pump to the tank. There it is. And it does take the blocks away, so it's not, you can't just put one piece of lava under it. You have to have a source, like a, a whole source, like a pool of it. And these will speed up eventually. So like this one, they're turning different colors and they're moving a bit quicker. And it just pumps lava faster. Or water or anything that you're really pumping. So then once again, goes in the tank. You have your wooden pipe. Turn on these ones. And it's going to take it from the tank into the geothermal generator. And we're going to get that sweet, sweet power. Now, our last and final one. This, well... Let's cover the other one first. Another way to do this is, let's say you don't want to make a pump, or you can't make a pump, or it's just too inconvenient. So, if you make what's called a tank, which is four obsidian, and then five uh, glass panes, they don't have to be stained or anything, they can just be normal glass panes, you get two tanks. The nice thing about tanks is that you can place them down, and then you can get your buckets, grab your lava with wherever you are, whether you're in the nether or just out and about, and you can place them into your tanks. And then you can actually pick these up with the lava in it. I do believe you can use any kind of pickaxe, so wooden, stone, diamond, iron, anything like that. But you break it, you pick it up, and it saves the amount of lava that you put in there. And then you can bring it over to your, you can bring it over to your machine. You know, get rid of this. Throw down your tank. And once again, just go with your redstone engines. Some lovers. Ooh, now I did make a mistake. That wooden pipe is not facing the tank, so we want to fix that. Now you have to have the... Oh my. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so you want to make sure it's facing the right way. And then, don't do that. Place down your redstone engines again. Bingo bango, goes into here, and it's generating power. Or at least it's filling up, it shouldn't generate power just yet. But it'll fill up. Now, the last and final way, which is my all-time favorite, but it is the most complicated, is your same normal setup, except you can add a bunch of these tanks. And it requires going into the nether. Because what's a better place to get lava than the nether? <laughs> Yeah, see, this one already drained that real quick. It's already in there. Good to go. But, with going to the nether, what you're going to need to do is make yourself a portal. Go on in, and find yourself one of these beautiful lava lakes. Now, with this lava lake, you want to put a pump above it. And, you want to turn your pump on. You know that you're above liquid and that you've done everything right, as long as you can see this pipe down here. 
and you can have your golden fluid pipe going into a ender tank. So, a ender tank. You're gonna take two pieces of obsidian, a piece of wool, four blaze rods, an ender pearl, and a cauldron. And it's gonna start filling up into there. And then, I don't know if you saw, but on the other side, it's filling into here. And with it filling into here, you can, I do believe, just take your wooden fluid pipe. Oh, oh, I forgot about this. Okay, so when you're placing down your under thing, it'll naturally have the blue uh, circle up top. That means that's an input. You want to change it to red, meaning that's an output. Now I did kind of place this in the wrong spot. Oh, and I don't need the wooden. There you go. You can just use golden pipes and you have an endless supply of lava. Now, the only problem with the system, and that kind of makes it a little bit more complicated, is that the nether is not loaded. It's not a loaded chunk. So you'd have to sit in there, and let's say you're gonna go eat dinner for your parents, or go eat, or, you know, eat, because I love eating. <laughs> you can sit there AFK, and the lava will come into here, and all your other machines will work once you come back to the overworld. Now, fix for this, if you want this to continuously bring in lava, is go back to the nether. Well, I guess while you're outside the nether, make this. But you want to make yourself a standard world spike. In order to do this, you're going to need two pieces of obsidian, one ender pearl, two diamonds, and four gold ingots. What this will do is it will keep a certain chunk loaded. That way it runs at all times. And you don't have to, you know, sit AFK and wait for it to uh, fill up your tanks. So what you want to do is this is uh, World Spike Fuel, zero hours. You can use, now it says you can use Obsidian Dust. I tried in my survival world and I could not get to use anything but Ender Pearls. So you put your Ender Pearl in there and it will stay uh, active for four real life hours. And it will continuously fill this up for those four hours. And you basically have a uh, endless supply of lava. Because those lakes in the, the nether are huge. I mean, I've for as long as I've played single player worlds, I've never gotten a lake in the nether too completely empty. Now if you play, you know, Texas for on one world for like four years straight, absolutely. You could probably empty out a world pretty or a uh, uh, nether lake pretty quick. Not quick, but pretty often. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is my love for geothermal generators and kind of why I, I use them for everything. And thermal generators are even better than geothermal generators because they just use the lava even more efficiently. They're kind of a no-touch system once you have everything all set up. Uh, just for a quick reminder, in order to make a geothermal generator, you just need empty cells, glass, steel, generator. If you want to learn more about that, go check out my other video, which is how to Texas basic power. All right. Thanks for being here, guys. Have a great day. Subscribe.